Hello, it's Saturday, and Saturday over here in my flat means that it's my comic delivery day. For some reason, they either come on Friday or Saturday. So I'm going to unpack, unpack it now and you can have a look with me at what's come this week. There we go. So it comes in a nice, sturdy cardboard box. That's why I like ordering from them. And then extra wrapping in the paper bag. And the one perk of getting them online compared to buying them from the shop. They come pre-bagged and boarded as well, which makes it nice and easy for getting them sorted afterwards. So this week I've got Action Comics. I'm really enjoying that comic. Superb series. And then Red Batman, White Knight Presents, Red Hood. That's, I think it's only a two-part um, like mini spin-off from the current uh, series of um, Batman by... Oh, what's he called? I'll have to have a look inside. I've only just not been awake very long. Pardon me. Hay fever again, as you can tell. Uh, yeah, by Sean Murphy, his Batman universe. And then I got... Captain America, Symbol of Truth. I'm enjoying both the Captain America comics. Um, I think they're two of the strongest Marvel comics around at moments. But that's not saying a lot because Marvel's pretty boring, to be honest. They don't they play it too safe, or it's always a concept idea what they hope can be spun off into a Marvel um, cinematic or TV universe. I just wish they'd try and do some more mature readers' comics. I mean, the majority of comic readers now. Off, they're not they're not kids. I mean, so do some comics for for adults like DC do. I just I just get a bit jaded with Marvel. I'm real crossover heavy. <coughs> I will say this before, like I said, do excuse me because I'm really snotty today because of hay fever. What I will say is, I've just found out that Axe is finishing the X Men. That's finishing in November December. But after that, they're doing another they're doing another big epic crossover. So I might be stopping all my X Men titles. I'm just getting jaded with it. So there we go. Next up, Deathstroke Inc. Year One Chapter Three. I really, they should just change this to Deathstroke because it is the history of Deathstroke. It's a great, um, really good, solid story. And I hope going forward, they carry on just in this format, just doing Deathstroke. Um, this is what I like about I like it when it's just put pure Deathstroke. He's not nice, he's a bastard basically. And um I just like it when they make him it, when they make it just more raw and more like a an action adventure comic and less of a superhero comic. And um, it's really good, enjoying it. Uh Defenders Beyond. I will say, even even I've just been slagging off Marvel, I love O. Ewing's um Defenders series. I got the one before this. And now this is the second one, Defense Beyond. And him and Javier Rodriguez together, they're just a superb team. I mean, the covers alone are worth buying. And the Arwaki side is just as good. It's just, it reminds me of prime experimental comics from Marvel in the 80s, which is what's lacking from Marvel nowadays. There's not enough experimentation. And that's one of the few examples that where they book the trend. And then, of course, Detective Comics by Ram V. Ah, Ramvi <laughs> and um, Raphael Albuquerque, and it, just a masterclass in um, how to do Batman. Great, not even gothic noir. Um, I'd say it's more opera noir. It's got a nice, um, very arty flavour to it. Oh, there's my Doctor Who there, uh, Teddy as well. Don't know why I showed you that, but then there's Harley Quinn. This is the Final part, I think, of the weekly releases, and then the final part of this story comes out next week in the Harley Quinn annual. So I kind of like that because they used to do that with annuals, is make annuals integral to the story, like they did with, like, for example, the Judas contracts in the New Teen Titans back in the day. Whereas I think the past few years, annuals have just been more like just how to get money and just fill out pages without much of a story, but at least they're doing something about it now. And then Rogues Gallery. I'm going to give this a few issues. I enjoyed the first one. The only thing I didn't like was 
there wasn't many pages um, but the artwork was great and the story was interesting so I'm, I'm going to give it a shot and carry on with that and that cover is really interesting so that's it um, excuse the voice being all snotty and deep but like I said I've not been awake for long and I'm really full of hay fever and I think I'll be saying that until about hay fever until about October November at this race it's not the pollen's not going away um, and I shall do another video later one so that's my pile of comics so I'll do another video not today but some hopefully sometime in the next few days or next week and I might actually do like start doing a video of my shelves um, give you a bit of backstory um, I used to have thousands of thousands and thousands this is no joke I, I had 20 bookcases at my old house I used to be married um, and they were just crammed with um, novels and especially graphic novels I basically had full runs of anything you could think of I was obsessive um, but then my marriage broke up and I had to downsize and I had to get rid of them all um, so that was about 10 years ago 11 years ago um, and then from that I then made the switch to digital comics so I had for a long time um, Again, thousands of comics and graphic novels, but just in digital formats on my Kindle or whatever tablet I was using at the time. Um, but then Comixology, they buggered everything up. Um, so <laughs> I then stopped using my, my um, comic, I stopped using digital comics because the only thing I'm getting digital now is 2000 AD. Uh, because Comixology is a nightmare to look at now. Um, it's just become like the um, Amazon Kindle. There's no, there's no freedom of. You don't feel like you're reading a comic anymore. Um, so this was a year and a half ago when it happened. A year ago, something like about a year and a half ago. So I converted back to buying graphic novels, um, physical graphic novels, and physical comics. Um, so it's been good business for my comic shop, com for the comic shops I go to, and for. Uh, um, buying books in general uh, I did have a few graphic novels what I kept before but I, I only had a limited amount so, it's, so I've increased my graphic novel collection a lot especially with manga um, and like I said I've started getting comics again I don't get massive amounts of comics even though it might look like I do because uh, I sell quite a lot as well um, uh, yeah, and so that's where I'm at today, so when I do show you my bookcases, it's not going to be thousands and thousands of books. There's quite a number of uh, graphic novels, but um, I just, like I said, I've only just really started getting my physical formats again in the past year and a half or so. Um, so that'll be it. So I'll be interested to see your feedback, and that'll be in my next video. Okay, bye. Oh, and I must show me ugly mug as well next time. Bye.